and there is nothing to inherit. They have no property uh, in their name at all. Sometimes, Mr. Speaker, you find it is a matrimonial property, and each spouse has a contribution uh, to that property. So then, when it is a man who is deceased, and his share is so little, and the number of children, other than the children of the, of the wife, are also entitled, again, it raises another complication. And, and uh, it has been difficult, Mr. Speaker. Some people die, testate with a will, and the will is still found not to be fair. And then the matter ends up being treated as intestate and then goes back to square zero and raises a lot of issues. Uh, there has been many debates as to whether one should make a will or which way should they ensure that uh, their, their property helps the children the moment they are no more. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, Mr. Speaker, is, is, is always... Uh, case to case, circumstances to circumstances. But I had uh, one scenario I was given by a friend of mine, he's now deceased, but when his father died, who was a politician, he expected a lot of trouble at the funeral uh, because his father uh, was wealthy. Uh, and therefore, when he went to the funeral, he saw people pretty much looking like him and he knew the time sons would be called, there would be quite a number. But to his surprise, these people who just attended the funeral and left quietly because his father had sorted out them before uh, <laughs> he had died. And <laughs> at all material times, they knew uh, the day of the funeral, there's nothing to come and share. They would just attend. And he was pleasantly pleased because he expected... Uh, are there to be a lot of battles uh, for their succession. And therefore, I think eventually this, this matter is determined from uh, case to case, family to family. In fact, the Muslims have Islamic law and the personal law applies to them. We have also people who the succession act may not fall into. Suppose then you are under customary law and you are purely married under customary law, which is potentially polygamous then do you really fit squarely as the law of succession? So the law of succession has been left loose for many years and with many loopholes. And an attempt by Senator Maina, a renowned lawyer and a senator we have a lot of respect for, to sort out a few loopholes, uh, sounds like a case tailored to a certain class of people and a case, you know, which may apply or may not apply. So it's, it's, a, it's a good time for us to ponder, and I think when it comes to that reading, really, we really need to sit with the jailer and her, uh, and still think further according to uh, the precedents being generated uh, by the courts every other day. And even some people have attempted to leave their property under trust. The trust has become more complicated than a succession issue. In fact, now for strangers come and loot uh, the trust. Uh, and in fact, they, they, they get an opportunity to share the wealth, abandoning all the children. And then the matter drugs in court and every other time, anybody looking uh, like they resemble the deceased, they come forth and say, we are also uh, children of the deceased. Recently, we had a Kenyan uh, from Okambani who passed on in the U.S. And, uh, you know, although he never got married, uh, some son claimed the estate, a son in quotes. And after some time, it was discovered that uh, this was a fake son. But they had already, you know, gone through the court process and attempted to secure the, the, the estate of disease, which was massive in the United States of America. So the, 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 the case, you know, this is, has to be case to case. And depending on now, the owner of the property has handled uh, the matter, and even nowadays, uh, uh, a lot of men are preferring once they die to be cremated, so that there is nobody to be, no body to be fought for, or no one to stop any funeral. And even people have attempted to stop those cremations, but even after cremation, it is still not sorting 
uh, the problem. Uh, issues still arise, especially if uh, the person had anything to be inherited. And we have also got situations where it is even difficult to realize the net estate because of debts, uh, you know, bankruptcy of companies and uh, uh, a lot of, you know, debts owed to that estate so that there is even nothing uh, to share or to distribute. And, and therefore, as much as you are talking about a child, the, the more practical thing in courts is children who are not under 18 uh, and are still entitled to the estate. Including now, so when in this particular proposal, we have a child, mini, one who has been uh, uh, born. We have a child, mini, uh, you know, you, you know, one who is under 18, and they are probably going through schooling. Uh, then that uh, at its own place. But what do you do with the people who are adults, probably uh, of their own children, meaning now the deceased has grandchildren? And all these people are claiming to have been uh, children of, this, uh, of, the, uh, 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 of, of deceased. So succession, uh, you know, is a tricky idea. It's a very tricky issue. Even where there has been a divorce, uh, and uh, there, there are still issues being determined as to what did the lady or man contribute into the empire they have. Uh, you know, there are, there are still uncharted areas by the courts. And every day, the, the, the jurisprudence uh, of um, the jurisprudence of, uh, <laughs> of these cases is still being developed. And fortunately, Mr. Speaker, we lost uh, a, a, a judge who was very, uh, you know, good at developing jurisprudence in, uh, in any area he was working on. He will first work out on the jurisprudence uh, and what laws could really apply. Uh, the Honorable Justice Bajaj, but unfortunately we lost him, as all of you know, and I'm told his services tomorrow. In fact, I would really like to attend because I knew him from college and I appeared uh, before him quite a number of times. But he was very good at developing jurisprudence. And I think in, in this case-to-case, -case, then a jurisprudence has to be established or developed because there are so many incidental issues such that you may not be able to frame them and narrow them to an act of parliament. They keep on, uh, you know, generating and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, moving uh, in different directions, case-to-case. Even when you define marriage, you know, people who have lived together for seven years and are regarded as husband and wife, the, the, the law also says there's presumption of marriage in that case. So somebody may have just cohabited with another for seven years. They will go to court and establish that uh, uh, they were presumed married. And therefore, then the succession issue ensue, and there, will be, there may be people entitled to that estate. Going back to the Bible, you know, when Abraham had another child, and eventually now Isaac was born, when the lady was being sent away after a dispute, she was given a lot of property. She was given an entitlement together with her son. They never left empty-handed. So that could be a basis of a jurisprudence uh, on what could happen in scenarios like that. Then you had, um, you know, the I issue of uh, when a woman passes away and she's the owner of everything. <laughs> then the, the man has also sad other children elsewhere. So then uh, it means when the man goes away, now that property has been left uh, uh, with a widower, then it means there are others who will come and claim uh, you know, who are not part of it. So then how do you determine then how the, the lady who passes away, her children benefit? And suppose it happens, the lady passes away, and not before even succession issues are sorted, the man passes away, then other children arise. So each case really, Mr. Speaker, has to be dealt on its own merit, circumstances, uh, and, and it will be, in my own opinion, very difficult to fix strictly uh, all the succession issues, marriage issues, uh, to, to one uh, 
place. Then the issue even of community land. You know now we have law relating to community land. Uh, and the community land means no particular person has a title or is fully entitled to that land. So how does succession interplay with this within that community? Suppose some of the children sad out of marriage or within marriage do not belong to that community. Uh, then there is the issue of father or mother. A son passes on and the property, if he had any, is given to the father while the mother is alive. So I think that introduction could help uh, that the two of you then benefit. I don't even know what was the, the wisdom of leaving it to a father alone because then it is a son uh, who, who, who passes on or a child or, or somebody sad from that home could also be a daughter. And in fact, a lot of the scenarios play in the courts is where a daughter passes away who was not married and had no children and had property. And then probably whether she was married or not or somebody's, other people are making claims on, on that, then probably whatever would be the net estate then could come to their family where they were born. So these are very um, um, interesting matters which uh, are mind-boggling to judges when they are trying to determine them. And uh, is, is, is an area of law which is very debatable, Mr. Speaker. They are, uh, the, the proposals um, are a good attempt. Uh, then when a widow remarries, that scenario, uh, somebody passes away, leaves a widow with a lot of property, then within a year or so, she's now married to a new man. Uh, then what will, be the, what will be the entitlement? Will this property go back to the parents or will it now move to the new man? Because she's likely to lose all of it to the new man. There's so many questions which you can't get answers unless you deal case by case. Uh, I really would like to support my senior and friend, <laughs> uh, Senator Maina, but we need to look at it more, uh, further details uh, during third reading, so that we can come up with scenarios exp uh, applicable. And the, in Africa, each, the, the, the applicable culture is, 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 is amazing. You know, community to community, there are different cultures which also come to play. When it comes to Islamic religion, it is very clear what must happen. But when it comes to succession and African culture, it has got a lot of many other issues which come up, and so long as that culture is not repugnant to justice, probably will be applicable. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I beg to support, because it is my friend, Veronica Maina, and she is likely to persuade me, but we really need to think uh, and even um, employ experts, probably here, uh, a lot of other opinions. I don't know what happened due, uh, on pol uh, public participation. Probably succession courts would have given a very big input into this, depending on the cases they have gone through and how uh, wisely they have gone around them. But a lot of judges are encouraging and calling upon everybody interested to come to court, and then they agree on a way forward there as a family, and then they go and do as they have agreed. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for your support. Senator Cheriot, Aaron. Mr. Speaker, I'll try and be very brief. This is not something that uh, you want to speak a lot of things about because it is dodged with very many risky corners uh, as you contribute. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you can be asked later to declare your interest in some of the provisions. Uh, <laughs> Therefore, for the record, Mr. Speaker, it is important to say this is purely legislative work and no personal interest uh, in it. Uh, but very thought-provoking listening to Senator Veronica Minor, Mr. Speaker, uh, very distinguished uh, legislator, and I love the work that um, she's doing in the Senate, uh, Mr. Speaker, many bills that she has proposed, this just being one of them, Mr. Speaker, and therefore I'd wish to indulge uh, her in a few thoughts. Mr. Speaker, even before going into the very details of the various sections of the law that she is seeking to amend and the justification she gave, there's something Senator Manzo said in passing. 
but he didn't realize uh, the gravity of the debate, actually, he was handling at that particular point, Mr. Speaker. Because one of the greatest challenges of the laws of succession, uh, listening to it and even having just a, a cursory look into the issues that are before various courts of law, uh, Mr. Speaker, and even in public arena, uh, because that's not, it's not only in our courts of law, Mr. Speaker, that uh, laws of succession are practiced. Even in villages, uh, Mr. Speaker, where ordinary citizens who cannot access the courts of justice uh, sit down and try uh, to agree on some of these issues, Mr. Speaker, there are rules and there are challenges there. Senator uh, for Makueni, my good friend Senator Manzo, did mention the conflicting application of this law uh, in line with customary practices in our various communities. And this varies from one community to the other, Mr. Speaker. And it is unfortunate. I wish uh, Senator Veronica uh, perhaps had taken time to reflect on this as well, of how do we marry uh, the law with this uh, various uh, customary practice. I know for a fact uh, Senator Manzo uh, comes from the Akamba people. And one customary practice that we share with them, with the people, where my own people, Mr. Speaker, is where back in the olden days, women used to marry other women. And it's not in the way that uh, we are accustomed to, to now and the stories that we hear uh, about all these other things, Mr. Speaker. But it was that uh, when a woman is married, if for whatever reason she was not able to uh, bear children, then she was allowed actually to bring in an aide or an assistant. And it's a practice that uh, is established even in uh, biblical practice, Mr. Speaker, because if you're a reader of the Bible, you know what happened between Sarah and uh, I, uh, Haga, actually, that's her name. Uh, uh, thank you, Senator Beth. I didn't know you, you read the Bible uh, that deeply. Uh, what happened between Sarah and Haga, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker? So it's um, a practice steeped deep even into uh, biblical mythology, yet uh, there are communities that practice that. Upon the demise, say, of the uh, patriarch of that family, uh, Mr. Speaker, and this I have seen in practice in many uh, places among us, the people that are represented this house, Mr. Speaker, challenges normally arise and people are asked, you find members of the legitimate or what would be considered the family that had been formally married uh, take to battle with the rest of the uh, uh, members of the family. And this includes, uh, Mr. Speaker, if the woman who has been co-opted into the family had children of her own previously before coming into that family. And that's uh, an area of challenge. And so many other scenarios and customary uh, practices among us, the different uh, people that are represented and form the society that is Kenya, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I have seen struggle. First of all, Mr. Speaker, you know in many communities, they consider it taboo uh, to go and resolve, say, land matters in, through a court process. Many of them would rather that uh, the village... Uh, elders and members. First of all, it starts with the clan uh, members of a particular family you're called and try and adjudicate. If you're unable to reach uh, an amicable solution, Mr. Speaker, you invite the village. And if the village doesn't agree, then eventually people uh, seek court interpretation. And it was actually the High Court uh, sitting in Kericho that changed part of, made a very significant finding on the laws of succession with respect to land, Mr. Speaker. About six or seven years ago, it was that High Court in Kericho, Mr. Speaker, that ruled that women could as well inherit uh, their father's land, even when married, uh, Mr. Speaker, if they laid a claim to it. And that remains, to the best of my knowledge, unchallenged up to date. And there, are many, there have been many families that uh, have gotten into uh, challenges with application of that particular uh, section of, of the law or uh, case law, Mr. Speaker, uh, for that particular uh, matter. And therefore, for Senator Veronica Minor to attempt to provide at least the legal basis and clean up uh, the various uh, section of the law uh, with regards to uh, succession is quite commendable. And I want to appreciate uh, the industry that has gone into this bill. I want to believe, Mr. Speaker, that it is in line with her practice as a lawyer, Mr. Speaker, that she has been able to point, up, uh, point out uh, many of these uh, uh, either inconsistencies of the law, Mr. Speaker, or functions of poor drafting, Mr. Speaker, that has led to difficult interpretation 
and uh, challenges with application of the law. And it therefore goes without much forbearance, Mr. Speaker, that that is the reason that it be begins even by very basic issues such as just def definition, even on a simple matter such as matrimonial home, uh, Mr. Speaker. And he has provided elaborate clarification now, uh, Mr. Speaker, that a matrimonial home will mean actually any uh, property that is owned or leased by one or both of the spouses and is occupied or utilized by the spouses as their family home and includes other, any other attached uh, property, Mr. Speaker. And it's important to give that particular clarity, Mr. Speaker, because I want to believe that that wasn't the case uh, as a matter may be. Because there are others who believe that so long as it's a property held elsewhere, uh, many will, did not want uh, that to be the broader definition of what a matrimonial uh, property is, Mr. Speaker. But by act uh, or by operation of this bill, once it becomes an act of parliament, that will be operation. And it's important for the men, even as you debate this, to know that this involves every, any other attached property. I know I'd be keen to hear what Senator Mogeni will want to say about this, and especially given that there are other details of his family which I don't want to uh, reveal, <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> you know, some of us can get away with the interpretation of the law. Uh, Mr. Speaker, he, he does not have that luxury, uh, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, as we pass this legislation, think clearly uh, as a man and uh, as Senator Veronica warned us uh, earlier, uh, not the situation as it prevails presently, but what it portends for the future. You never know what can happen uh, to you as a man. I see when I, when I say that, Mr. Speaker, uh, Senator Mtata really looked keenly at me. I don't know what plans he has. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Section 5 of the bill, uh, Mr. Speaker, is an amendment, actually, uh, of the Principal Act, and um, just cleaning up the various uh, legislations that I said. Number one is on this issue of uh, surviving child who's not a child of the surviving spouse. You know very well this particular issue, and many colleagues have spoken on this particular matter, what happens in funerals. We've had all these stories and uh, how it ends up being a difficult journey. Mr. So Speaker, you know, especially we that are in this trade of politics, uh, many times when our tour of duty on this earth comes to an end, Mr. So Speaker, sometimes families have to resort to very crude means of keeping products of our industry elsewhere away from attending uh, funerals. And I have seen even goons and vigilantes, Mr. Speaker, being hired. Uh, we, we, we have all watched and we have ideas that uh, come uh, to mind. It's perhaps because people knew and I think what people are avoiding at that particular time is the recognition that comes with being present during the day of uh, being laid to rest. With this clarity that is now being provided uh, by law, the way Senator Veronica is doing, uh, even as a child that is not formally recognized in a family, you need not go and fight and endanger your life if you know that you are not properly appreciated in a particular uh, family. By law, you're being uh, provided uh, good cover, and that's part of what the clarification that this uh, proposed bill is giving. Uh, subsection 1B, Mr. Speaker, the surviving spouse shall be entitled to the personal and household e effects of the deceased absolutely and a life interest in one half of the whole residue of the net estate, and the surviving child shall be entitled to one half, uh, Mr. Speaker, of the other. The division that comes between these two particular, treating each a separate and distinct uh, entity, uh, Mr. Speaker, which wasn't the case because there are other families, Mr. Speaker. What happens in the case where, for example, you have two or three sons, you have an estate, uh, Mr. Speaker, and suddenly uh, a child who's not part of the family of the spouse that is alive eventually uh, shows up, Mr. Speaker. This provides coverage to them, and many families... Uh, Mr. Speaker, sometimes agree uh, to share. But this makes it even more difficult because just a plain reading, and uh, maybe Senator Veronica, you may need to clarify uh, to us later on as you will be responding to this bill, whether that particular child will be counted among the other three or it's a complete separate home as such given that the fact that this is dividing the estate into two between the surviving spouse and this other child. Because it means two different things, Senator Veronica Minor, and you may want to provide clarity to that, because if, uh, for argument's sake, 
a deceased person had three sons, and their estate is being divided among these particular uh, three sons. A simple calculation is that if another son was to show up, uh, Senator Veronica, by dint of practice of the law as you're proposing it, then the division will now be in two. The mother and her sons and these are the sons that have showed up, being treated as another family, as opposed to being put together with the other three sons. You need to provide clarity, uh, uh, Senator uh, 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 Veronica. Otherwise, unless I haven't read uh, quite properly, but it's something that I, I, I will need to understand, uh, and I want to repeat uh, for emphasis sake that I said this is in public interest. Uh, no other interest, Mr. Speaker, in this uh, B, uh, Mr. Speaker, is uh, also where there are surviving children, uh, a child who is not a child of the surviving spouse. What are their entitlements, which is what now I was speaking to, which is, number one, that surviving spouse being entitled to the household effects. That is absolute, as uh, described uh, previously. But part two, the net interstate estate shall, in the first instance, be divided equally among the surviving spouse and all the surviving children. And that's the part that I said you, you need to bring it uh, quite properly clear uh, for everybody to appreciate and know that that is not the case. That for me, what will pass as a fair law is that if it is known that these are the children of a deceased person and it doesn't matter uh, from uh, which of the spouses, uh, Mr. Speaker, that so long, at, so long as it has been clearly established, Mr. Speaker, that this is a child of the deceased, then let them be treated all as one uh, equal family and the property or inter-estate inter be shared equally among us, uh, them. Senator Veronica will, will, uh, will provide. In fact, it, it, it gives me more uh, doubt and need for clarification in my mind, reading uh, part four, actually, of 5B4, Mr. Speaker, where I describe that they share of the surviving child who is not a child of the spouse under subsection 1, B, B2, shall be held in accordance with section 41. And if there, is, there be more than one child, they shall share equally. What happens, Mr. Speaker, if uh, Senator Veronica, keep it in your notes, what happens if even in that uh, extra child, there are more than one from different mothers as well, assuming the case... Uh, of, 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 of that the, the deceased person is a man, Mr. Speaker. And the same can happen to women uh, as well because society is evolving. We thought that previously when we were legislating and thinking about these issues, many of the time the laws were written with men in mind. But it is increasingly becoming clear that even women uh, sometimes have estates that need to be shared and uh, they might be kids uh, from spouses other than the one that they were married to. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and it's good because this law, as we keep changing, uh, it, uh, keeps on evolving. Section 6, Mr. Speaker, is just a clean-up uh, uh, of these particular laws as has been brought out. My particular interest, just by way of uh, completing my contributions to uh, this bill, is on Section uh, uh, Clause 8, Mr. Speaker, where Section 40 of the Principal Act uh, is being amended by inciting the following new subsection immediately after subsection 2, which is 3, because after the section 1, section 2, and this is now uh, part uh, 3. And you know, Mr. Speaker, one of these days, uh, this is something we may need to uh, discuss and uh, think critically about it. I know the clerk who's on the table uh, used to be a legal drafter uh, back in the days earlier in his career. Uh, still is, actually, but he did it formally then. I know now he's a big man. He doesn't do this kind of job anymore, uh, Mr. Speaker. When we do amendments to mother acts, many of the times we quote them in the bill but don't refer, such that making comments or even a plain reading of the bill sometimes is difficult because you, unless you're carrying the mother bill on, the, on one hand, Mr. Speaker, to keep on referring, sometimes you can lose track of uh, the arguments that you're making. For example, in this bill, like I have pointed, uh, Section 8 is an amendment to uh, Section, uh, article, uh, Clause 8 is an amendment to Section 40 of the Mother Act. So 
this new clause 3 is being introduced and you're just being told it is being added immediately after subsection 2. 1 and 2, which is not part of the bill in reading. And there's just something about it that I find uh, perhaps legislators can end up miss, missing the flow of what is being described, Mr. Speaker. You may not necessarily have to capture it on the bill, but maybe somewhere in the next years or, or there has to be a better way of uh, drafting these bills, Mr. Speaker, as opposed to what is being said. Anyway, back to the main point of what I wanted to say, is that this new uh, Section 3 that is being included, Mr. Speaker, is that it reads, notwithstanding Subsection 1, what I have just said, Section 1 is not here, uh, where any of the surviving children is not a child of any of the wives of the deceased, that child shall... And in fact, I don't know why uh, for this one they have used uh, uh, wives. Previously, in all the clauses that we have been reading on the bill, they have kept it gender neutral, which is spouse. Because like I have observed, uh, what passes for men nowadays uh, passes we're in the days of gender equity, uh, Mr. Speaker. And the same can be, could as well be husband, uh, unless maybe there is a specific reason. Uh, Senator Veronica Minor, you'll explain to us. A, that child shall, A, be considered as an additional unit in determining the share of dependents in the net interstate estate under subsection 1, and B, the share of such child shall be held in accordance with section 41, and if there be more than one child, they shall share equally. Uh, just the last point that I mentioned before, we, uh, before I conclude on this particular uh, matter, Mr. Speaker the need to take into consideration cultural sensitivities. And I pointed out that particular challenge that uh, exists between the Akamba people. I don't know if uh, Senator Wambua will know, but at least I know uh, Senator Beth because uh, of her standing in, uh, uh, by having been among us, the Akamba people, long enough. Senator Wambua left uh, uh, his people early enough to go to school and do other things. <laughs> So I'm not sure whether he knows these things. Uh, of course, Senator Kavindu will know this uh, as well. And I pointed out, Senator Wambua, that of the cultural practice of where women used to uh, bring on addition other women, uh, what is the place of such children? Because many of such women would come with kids from other uh, either marriages, uh, Mr. Speaker, or whatever the case may be what will be their standing. And that was just an example. There are many other cultural uh, sensitivities and practices which you cannot capture in this particular law in the manner that is being uh, proposed here. What is the place of such uh, children, Mr. Speaker? And so many other challenges that may arise to that. Perhaps uh, Senator Veronica, uh, Part C, uh, will make sense maybe during uh, the committee of the whole, or I don't know which committee will handle uh, this particular bill, to have a part C that uh, takes into consideration such sensitivities uh, uh, of children who biologically they neither belong to the either of the spouse but are still considered to be children of that uh, particular uh, family and how that needs to be treated in light of, uh, in light of, of uh, the shares uh, of division that is taking place, uh, Mr. Speaker, because these are live matters. Otherwise, Mr. Speaker, I want to appreciate uh, Senator Veronica Minor for this very thought-provoking bill uh, and hope that we shall have a fair and sober debate that the men will speak openly about because these are issues that affect us, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, the women as well, uh, Mr. Speaker. It's good to he hear their thoughts on this particular uh, thing so that we can have a law that ensures that no child is disinherited either by acts of omission or commission on the law uh, side, Mr. Speaker. With those very many remarks, Mr. Speaker, I... Oh, I'm used to moving. I thought I'm moving the bill, Mr. Speaker. I beg to contribute and agree to the uh, proposals being made. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator. Senator Eric Okongo Mogeni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, um, I also rise to make my contribution on this bill 
And uh, first, Mr. Speaker, I, I was mentioned, I think, adversely by Senator Cheriot. He touched my family and he, he may create an impression uh, that uh, other than my dear wife, uh, Jacqueline, I have another family. I want to declare that uh, I'm a loving husband to one wife, uh, Jacqueline, and I have no any other wife, Senator Cheriot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Speaker, um, <clears throat> I wish uh, Senator Veronica was here to, to, to listen to me. You know, <laughs> this bill was uh, before my committee last uh, parliament as a chairman of uh, JLAC uh, before I was succeeded by my good friend, uh, Senator Sige. And, and uh, the provisions that are here, uh, I mean, almost uh, lifted from all, what was in that law uh, were well, very interesting. You know, we did uh, public participation, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, and, and we thought some of these provisions would get support of, of women. But uh, it was during COVID, and we, we put in stakeholders together, and uh, we said, now let's, let's uh, collect views from uh, the public. And you'll be surprised, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, that uh, even on an issue like definition of who is a child, was very heated. And, and we had even National Council on, on Women, is, it, is that it's called NGEC? Uh, we had a feeder in the meeting. We had many women organizations. And it's not easy to convince all women across the board to accept uh, the child. Very, very interesting uh, proposals came to the table, and, and I hope uh, maybe uh, Senator Veronica can benefit from the uh, what is on, on, on uh, archives, on the views that we received uh, from the, the, the public. You know, like uh, the, the, what was interesting is what I heard from uh, women who felt that we are trying to legislate for, uh, you know, their husbands who may be keeping other women out there. And, and Madam Speaker, I mean Mr. Speaker, <laughs> despite their contribution, which I really appreciated, in protection of uh, children born out of wedlock, because they were very clear, Mr. Speaker, that we cannot throw those children to, to the wilderness. But they were very clear, Mr. Speaker, that uh, a proposal to include these other children should be so clear, Mr. Speaker, that uh, a share of what goes to these children who are born uh, outside should be a percentage. I mean, that was just a proposal. I'm not saying that, that was, that's what was on the bill, but they were so clear, uh, Mr. Speaker, that uh, somebody was giving an example that if you have uh, five children or six children born in a monogamous marriage, and this was coming from women, and, and they were of the view that if they have contributed with their husband in uh, uh, acquiring some property, then their children should get a, a higher share than the other one. They said, fine, we don't want those children to miss, but uh, we need to be careful how we share this property. So I'm, I've, I've no doubt, uh, Senator Veronica, that uh, you'll receive very interesting views. We were not able to even uh, finalize uh, the bill so it, it died uh, during uh, last session. I remember somebody said, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, that uh, there are people, women who can be what, she, what I think they called good, good peckers. They say there's an animal that is used to good picking, eh? good pecker, a good pecker. And they were giving an example like uh, Senator Chiriot, you know, is in uh, public limelight, is majority. Occasionally, has flown with a chopper to Kericho, and uh, there could be some ladies admiring him somewhere, you know. <laughs> and you know, the, the proposal was that uh, some of these, uh, you know, beautiful ladies may be looking for Senator Cheriot, not because they want uh, to be married to him, but because, according to them, they felt that we were, we were bringing in place a law that, that was going to entice women to go after some men who, in quotes, are perceived to be well off in society. And therefore, they were saying they, they will go to Senator Cheriot not because they want to be second wife, but because they, they are feeling 
that the law that has come in place makes it very easy for them and their children to inherit. So th this, this bill will get very interesting uh, views when it goes to public participation. So Senator Veronica Baina, be prepared to receive Senator that John Kinyo, what is your point of order? <laughs> m m Mr. Speaker, uh, the senior council has a very good debate. But now I, I did not get the part of the old speaker. Is it Senator Cheriot who is the speaker or the beautiful lady, Mr. Speaker? <laughs> the speaker, from the views we received, the, the, the good speaker is the woman who will be coming looking for... Uh, Senator Jorio to be the father of his <laughs> children. It was a very, it was very interesting. I mean, I, I hope when this this public participation uh, begins, uh, many of you can. Senator Crystal, do you have a point of order? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Speaker. Um, my good Senator from Nyamira was doing so well until he um, implied that woodpeckers are usually women, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> There are several women in this, in this Senate, as an example, and uh, we have property, we have um, a lot of um, investment that we've also made, and there can also be men who might come to Woodpeck, <laughs> and, I, and they do. They're called Bentens, Mr. Ben Speaker. <laughs> so kindly, if uh, they're to papas, exactly. They come only for one reason and one reason only, and I would like the Senator in his submission to kindly clarify that that can be both. Men and women, not just women alone. I thank you. You can see, Mr. Speaker, that's why I told you that the views that you receive from the public would be very interesting. Now, this is even another one, that uh, it's, only, it's not only the ladies, but there are also men <laughs> who are waiting for the passage of this bill, and then they say, now, if I, if I get uh, a child with that good senator, then my children will be assured of inheriting some. That's, that's the perception that came to the fore from the, the public. You know, many, many views. And I think it's good. It's, it's a good debate, uh, Mr. Speaker. It's good to have a law that is, uh, is certain, so that uh, as temptations come your way, you know before and that that is the position in, in law. But then I have no answers to, to you, Senator Maina, but I hope that uh, once you take this bill through a very intense public participation, you'll be able to, to come up with a bill that is acceptable to both the men and the, the women. As you have heard, it, uh, it cuts both ways. There are men who may benefit and the women who may uh, also benefit. The other point, Mr. Speaker, that uh, I, I found uh, very attractive to me is this clause that talks about intermeddling. Mr. Speaker, if you have heard stories on... Uh, uh, widows especially. I don't know about widows, but I know stories of widows who go through horrendous experiences. Mr. Speaker, you lose your spouse uh, in Nairobi or in Mombasa, and uh, members of the family of your spouse arrive, and they want to start sharing property, uh, Mr. Speaker, household items, and the like. So it's, it's very good that uh, this bill is trying to make it very clear, the Speaker, that anybody who tries to intermeddle in a property of a deceased person risks uh, facing uh, criminal prosecution. Uh, when a person has lost a dear one, Mr. Speaker, and they're in that state of mourning, the best that we should do to such a, a, a spouse is to be sensitive, to be kind to them, to be understanding, not to take the laws as an opportunity for us to share the properties of uh, a diseased uh, person. So this is a good uh, proposal. Uh, this one, I think, was not very contentious. Uh, it, it was bringing clarity uh, to the law. And it's good to, to make it clear, the Speaker, that if your spouse dies, the personal effects are left to you as a spouse, Mr. Speaker. There's no need of uh, third parties coming in to try to take over uh, properties that have been left behind by a, a deceased uh, person. I think the issue of uh, adopted children, the Children's Act addresses this very ably. Uh, it's good to know, Mr. Speaker, that once a child has been uh, adopted, he becomes a, a child. The word adopted is just used for a legal process. The moment a child 
is adopted through a, a legal process, by all intents and purposes, you become a child of that parent who has adopted you. And it's good that the law of succession uh, properly recognizes them as uh, uh, <clears throat> children. The other issue that uh, Senator Veronica would be interested to know is this idea of uh, trying to amend uh, Section 35 and uh, try to make the rights of uh, a widower and the widow to, to be applied equally. The speaker, somebody gave an example of uh, the culture in the Maasai community. And he said, uh, if I lose, and these are not my views. I'm Senator, just... Senator Makweni and Senator Kavindo, please uh, want to hear the Senator in silence. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm, I'm saying just to understand how culture uh, can re really collide. There, there was a, somebody who gave us... A, a view on uh, cows, you know, within the Maasai uh, community. And, you know, you could not understand what, what this law was trying to propose when it said that if you are a widower and you, you lose your, your wife, you had one wife, that if, if, you, if you marry, you lose your cows. The Maasai could not understand. <laughs> you know, because it was like, if, if a neighbor was to marry another wife, after the death of my spouse, the cows belong to me. So there's no way you can tell me that I will lose my cows. So I don't know how Senator uh, Veronica Maina, when you appear before the uh, Justice Committee, you'll clarify some of these cultural issues that may have a clash with the proposals in the law. But I know where you are coming from. This is an era where uh, the boy child and the girl child wants to be treated uh, equally. So the intention is good. You want uh, the benefits that accrue to the widower should accrue also to the widow. If there are <coughs> properties that will uh, pass over after processes happens, you are pro the law is simply telling us, the Speaker, that uh, if a widow remarries and the property, uh, the life interest ceases and passes over to the children, the same should be applicable to the widower. But literally speaking, what happens to a wife who becomes a widow, gets another man, and marries. And the same should happen to a man who becomes a widower, but gets another, uh, another woman and remarries. I think the law is just trying to, to bring uh, equality to the uh, spouses in, in a marriage. Again, I, I don't know what uh, answers you will get, but that was a very, very uh, interesting and uh, emotive uh, discussion about how you deal with the properties of uh, uh, a surviving uh, spouse. Mr. Speaker, I don't have a lot to say on uh, uh, Clause 6, because Clause 6 is simply trying to give us uh, uh, how to distribute the property of a deceased person in the event that there are no children left behind. And automatically, such a property should go both to the father and mother. I think what I had women telling us that time, I don't know whether that's what has been happening. What the women were saying is that there has been this tendency of uh, Mze saying, if uh, my daughter or child has died, then I should be the one taking the property. But the agitation was that that property should be inherited by both the father and the mother of the deceased child. I hope I'm getting it correct, uh, Veronica. And uh, I think that's, that's a fair one. In this era, uh, both mother and father sh should enjoy the fruits of uh, their labor. If you lose your child, uh, if they don't have anybody su succeeding them, that property should be shared equally between the mother and the father. I don't think that is uh, controversial. And then it is giving another, uh, you know, a chronology of the people should benefit so that we don't have uh, uh, disputes. Finally, as I conclude, Mr. Speaker, it's also to, uh, it's good to tell Kenyans also that you can take advantage and write a will. You know, this, prop this law 
is addressing people who die interstate. But if you take advantage and write a will, then you avoid some of the disputes that could arise uh, through succession. And I, was, uh, I must pass my condolences to the late Justice Majanja, but though a fairly youthful judge, he had not even hit 50, but uh, the moment he passed on, uh, very untimely at that very, very productive age, his will was with a lawyer. You know, he's a judge, but he had already written his will, and the lawyers came out and say, here is the will of the judge. His will was that he be cremated within 24 hours or within the shortest time possible. It's a good thing. Now, alternatively, Mr. Speaker, you can also have a process of registering your property in a manner that uh, if one of you passes on, really there is no controversy or uh, going through uh, the harrowing experience of doing succession. Succession can be... Uh, I mean, a bit, a bit complicated at times. Go to the chief, let the chief write for you a letter, giving the name of your spouse, the children. You have to get searches of all the properties. It's tedious. But if you have a joint registration, if Veronica and Mr. Maina, God forbid, have, if they have a joint property registered jointly, if one of them passes on, the property automatically reverts to the surviving spouse. It's, it's one way of avoiding all these, uh, you know, uh, problems of dealing with uh, succession. So it's, it's good also to ask Kenyans, take advantage on uh, the land laws that are in existence. You can have a joint registration where the property will automatically revert to the surviving uh, spouse. So I look forward to engaging with uh, this committee. I think I will also create time to appear before the CIGA committee to give my views and proposals on this uh, bill. I hope you will complete the task that we are not able to, to complete uh, as a committee in the last parliament so that we can have clarity on this law of uh, uh, succession. And uh, make sure that you invite both male and female to appear before you and uh, give their views. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator. Senator Enokwambua. Uh, I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I, I want to thank uh, Senator Veronica for taking up this uh, this bill, um, I have just a few comments, beginning with a reaction to her own comment when she was moving the bill, that she doesn't expect that there will be another person in the name of a wife in, in a home and yet that's a good wish, but you never know. I mean, uh, you only know when it happens. Mr. Speaker, let's face it, the institution of marriage in this country has really come under intense attack, especially on the matter of inheritance. And um, the intention of this bill is noble to, to deal with matters that arise in the event of uh, the necessity to, to share property. But Mr. Speaker, I also want to, to pass a caution to, to all of us and to, to spouses that there is more to, to, to marriage than just the sharing of property. It, it really commercialized marriage to the extent that now I'm hearing people marrying for the convenience of property and wealth. The speaker going to the bill, 
there is a bit of confusion, and I hope then uh, Senator Veronica, when she appears before the committee to defend this bill and maybe to take us through uh, public participation, some of these things will be clarified. For instance, we, we, we are concentrating on the child. You know, the, this bill speaks so much about, about the child. And I'm asking myself, are we, are we talking about child also referring to a dependent? Are we talking about child also making reference to a person who is entitled? Or are we talking about child as defined by the law? And if you're talking about child as defined by the law, then the question arises, if you are over 18, are you still a child? And are you entitled to the provisions of this bill? Because this bill is talking about a child. And we all know, we all know that we had a, a very interesting case, and I don't want to na mention names, of um, a 52-year-old child yeah, who came up and said, I also want a share of my father's inheritance or property. So is that also a, a, a child in the definition of this bill, or, or what exactly are we talking about? Now, on the matter of uh, intermeddling, um, I'm happy. I'm happy that the bill, uh, sponsored by Senator Veronica, is is trying to challenge some existing um, cultural norms and practices that that really maybe should not have any place in today's institution of marriage. The issue of people invading the, the households of deceased persons and, and cutting away you know, property. And it will be remembered that in some areas it's not just even cutting away property. They, they even appropriate the, the surviving spouse, you know. So it's good to provide clarity um, on, on the matter of um, intermeddling in the event of a spouse passing on. Now, Senator Veronica, there is, there is a challenge. There is a small challenge. This bill speaks about inheritance or passing on property and wealth in the event of, of death. But you see, you should also be alive to the fact that, and I know this because you also subscribe to the same faith as, as I do, that the institution of, of marriage is complete at the tying of the knot. Once, once a man is married to a woman, that becomes family. Now, according to this bill, it's, it's a bit too prescriptive because it says that when one spouse dies and the surviving spouse remarries, then they lose ownership of the property that was acquired from the first marriage. And the question that you should be asking yourself is, if death occurred before a child came and the surviving spouse remarries, where does that property go to? So the reason for remarrying should, should make a difference in determining where the property, or the sharing of, of the property. 
Now, Senator Cheriot, in passing, brought up a very important conversation that I don't know how Senator Veronica will handle this. In some customs, and, and, and I heard him say he doesn't know about whether I am accustomed to that. It is happening even now. It's not like it's something that has stopped. It, there are situations where a married woman, a wife, would bring another woman into a homestead, what you're calling the matrimonial home, and that woman who has been brought, in most cases, they'll come with children from other fathers. And when they come, they become part of that family, but, they, but there's no biological connection between them and any member of that family apart from their mother. Now, in the event of the passing on of their mother, how will you treat such children? Are they also children in the definition of this bill that we want to push into law? Or are they going to be treated differently? Lastly, it's a matter that has been um, mentioned by Senator Mogheni. The law recognizes legally binding wills, a will that is written by a spouse on especially on how they want their property to be shared upon demise. Now, what do you do, Senator Veronica, in a situation where a spouse who has passed on leaves behind a legally binding will whose provisions go contrary to the provisions of this act? who says I'm sharing my property among my, my wife, my son, my daughter, and the other daughter. And this is how this property is going to be, to be shared. But because this bill is prescriptive, it says that half of the property will go to the surviving spouse and the other half will be shared equally among the children. What happens if the will legally binding, speaks otherwise. So those, those are some issues that, that, that I think they will need a conversation, uh, and I think I'm, I'm very sure it will happen in, um, in public participation. But just summarize and say that it is okay to, to debate this bill and, 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 and push it into, into law. But I just hope that this will not be the reason that, that people will want to enter into the institution of marriage, where then property becomes the guiding principle. You know, this man or this woman has got so much money. Uh, if I get married to them, I'm likely to benefit from their wealth upon, upon, um, upon dying. And we've, we've had uh, Senator Madago is disturbing the mover of the bill, and she is taking very important notes. Uh, speaker, protect me from Senator Madago. Very well, you can continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for protecting me. So, so, so then what happens in that eventuality? Because, again, we have also had, we live in this country, we also have of people, uh, spouses, who get into the institution 
and facilitate or fast track the, <laughs> the departure of their, their spouses from hearth so that they can inherit the property. So, so even as we discuss this bill, let it not be an avenue that, that people want to use to get into the institution for purposes of just inheriting a property. Otherwise, it's going to be a very interesting um, a discussion, especially in public participation. Uh, I, I hope you, you will invite us so that we can also uh, listen in and, and make whatever contribution we can make. The speaker, I thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Muthama Agnes Kavindu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to contribute to this amendment bill of succession. And Mr. Speaker, I'll be very brief because many of the points that I had has already been spoken into by the other senators who are before me. But Mr. Speaker, uh, kindly protect me from Senator Manso so that, uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, I'll be very short and very brief and to the point. The law, the customary law that you've had uh, Chariot uh, speak about and Arun um, speak about and, 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 and Wambua uh, is, is, a, is, is very true. It's a reality and it, is still, it is still goes on in Okambani. And... Uh, there is also another saying in Okambani that says, whoever marries your mother is your father. That means there are husbands who marry wives with children from other families. And once those children come to that family, they, 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 own, they are owned by that family and they become part and parcel of that family. And they, uh, on, on, on death, they, they inherit like the the biological children of that family. And what I'm, I want to say is that this uh, amendment bill is very, very timely because when we were doing the participation, public participation on uh, uh, the, the bomb, 1998 bomb blast when we were calling the stakeholders to come and share with us their experiences, there are women who told us that after their husbands died during the bomb blast issue, the in-laws chased them from their homes. To date, they have nowhere to stay. So they, this bill will protect such women and their children. So I really want to take this opportunity and congratulate uh, Senator Veronica Maina, my friend, uh, for coming up with this amendment uh, bill. Uh, Mr. Speaker, two days ago, I was also called from Kiva in Ma Masinga sub-county, in Machakos County, and told that there's a PWD uh, husband who married the first wife. The first wife went. He married the second wife. And she was, I think there, something happened and she was sent home by him uh, plus the relatives. And he has the third wife now. And as we talk, Mr. Speaker, what really saddened me is that this second wife went to court and got a court order to come and exhume a body of a son of that man from that land because she claimed that the land belonged to her and her, her ex-husband. And I, I thought and I said, which judge could really give such a ruling of a son who belongs to the father, and that land belongs to the father. And the claim is that this land should be sold and they share the produce, the money that they will get from the land, uh, both of them, the husband and the wife. And yet in that uh, marriage, there are three wives, which if we follow the law, should be sold or should, should be divided into three. And whoever wants to, 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 to sell their part, they sell. But uh, it should not, she, 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 the, I don't see uh, any point of her 
coming to exhume a body of a child of that family so that she can sell the, the land. So this, um, this uh, amendment bill will, will uh, protect such children who are very vulnerable and also people who are poor who cannot buy their way in courts because I would uh, think that that is corruption in the highest level for a judge to give an order for a body to be exhumed from the, 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 the son's home where he was born by his father and his mother. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, many of the points have been spoken, uh, but I will ask uh, Senator Veronica to also do an amendment of the matrimonial property at divorce because most of the wives who are just at home and they don't work, they really suffer when it comes to divorce because they are told to show their contribution, a tangible contribution. And yet they are that, in that home, they are doing every donkey work, they are giving birth, they are taking care of these children, they are taking care of that husband, and that should be their contribution on matrimonial property. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator. Senator Jackson Mandago. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, um, for giving me the opportunity to contribute um, to this matter. But, uh, Honorable Speaker, before I speak to what I want to speak about these amendments on this bill, um, I don't know whether a definition of work for a spouse would include giving birth to children, <coughs> but I'm saying that's a debate for another day, Honorable Speaker. Um, Honorable Speaker, um, unfortunately, uh, Senator Aaron Chiria and Wambua have, uh, have left the chamber. But uh, when I heard their contributions, Honorable Speaker, Senator Aaron seems to have been uh, worried of the future or the past, Honorable Speaker. Uh, and I, when I looked at him contributing, I thought he was reminiscing his days in Moe University. And you know, Honorable Speaker, um, university students engage in so many activities. Honorable Speaker, on these um, amendments, first I want to thank uh, Senator Veronica Maina for bringing <coughs> this subject matter, which is a matter that touches on um, daily living in all, in all our communities in this country, Honorable Speaker. And the matter of succession, uh, Honorable Speaker, has been a very emotive um, matter. Uh, but Honorable Speaker, most importantly, is the process of succession uh, that sometimes takes so long. And Honorable Speaker, as we speak today, a lot of assets and resources for families are held in abeyance. They cannot be accessed or used. And these resources run to billions of money that would have positively contributed to the economy of this country, Honorable Speaker, and to the individual lives of those families that are involved. Unfortunately, because of succession matters, disputes, and so forth, you find even the would-be beneficiaries would suffer for even more than 10, 15, 20 years to the extent that by the time the matters are resolved, Honorable Speaker, all those are meaningless, as some would have also even uh, themselves died in the process and complicate even them, the matter further. Uh, Honorable Speaker, especially on death, the issue of disposal of assets, you know, the rush to grab and so forth has been witnessed um, in many occasions in a number of families. But what worries me, Honorable Speaker, and I want to thank Senator Veronica for bringing this up, is that we have so many young widows in this country who probably they have just been married, they have a child or two, and... Um, I don't know what is happening to our beliefs as communities because um, we are Africans and Africans are business and we had our African cultures of addressing the matters. And from the community I come from, Honorable Speaker, once a woman is married, whether she has a child, one child or many children, she is already the married to that home. And there are some entitlements that comes without being married. But what we have witnessed uh, uh, of recent past, Honorable Speaker, and it's really quite unfortunate is that you would find a very young widow with one of those children, probably they have not even gone to school, being ejected from that family with nothing, 
and, and sent away with the children to go and take care of, while probably the husband or the, the mother or the, the wife, Honorable Speaker, had assets and resources that would have been used to bring up these children. Therefore, Honorable this Speaker, this debate is timely, and it's a debate that I would want to encourage Senator Veronica, particularly during public participation, to give it adequate time and publicity because these amendments could probably even help this country now unlock the many resources families are not able to access because of the disputes that have come. Honorable Speaker, on the issues of um, children, um, Honorable Speaker and surviving children, vis-a-vis -vis children, um, and, 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 I, and I want to say this because I think we need to define. You know, sometimes people, I see people say, children born out of wedlock, and I, I don't know what. I think uh, children are children. And, 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 and uh, my encouragement, and I would want to later engage um, Senator Veronica Miner, is to see how these amendments can also be linked to the rights of children, um, even in determination of land matters, Honorable Speaker, because the reason in this country we have so many uh, women who say uh, we are single mothers, uh, and I know the IVF technology and others just came in recently, but we know the issue of uh, single mothers has been with us for quite some time, uh, Honorable Speaker. I hope part of these amendments will encourage men to take responsibility of their children, Honorable Speaker, so that we don't have, um, yes, a lady can be single, not married, but have children, but let those children know their father. And this is how also it will help, you know, um, when, when it comes to succession in solving some of the matters, as opposed to a situation um, uh, like what uh, the Senator for McQueen was saying, that uh, you arrive in a funeral, then uh, you look acro across the tents and you, you find a brigade of people you resemble one another uh, and you've never met uh, and you don't know what would happen uh, next on the speaker. If we encourage um, openness and responsibility and we make sure that all children um, are given the opportunity to know their identity and uh, encourage the ladies not to hide the identity of the fathers of their children, Honorable Speaker, it would contribute to resolving some of these matters. Honorable Speaker, um, in a situation where one of the parents, of course, dies or the one whose spouse dies and the other decides to remarry, I would really want to encourage Senator Veronica Minor that that is an area that needs to be given critical thought of how the resources that was left behind is going to either be shared or used to bring up the children that have been left behind. Honorable Speaker, we have seen in a number of occasions um, a situation where when a mother or children dies, the man is left after one year or so, uh, he gets married, uh, and Honorable Speaker, what follows is that the children whose mother died are mistreated, some are battered, we've witnessed situations where children have been beaten, use hot iron to, you know, to put marks on their backs, and finally those children lead very distressful lives. I think, Honorable Speaker, even as we consider this bill um, and amendments, uh, Senator Veronica Minor, we also have to now put into consideration such situations so that if you are to marry again, we should consider that as a fresh marriage and see how then at that point the resources that were available for that family and for those children, uh, Honorable Speaker, would be used to make sure that the, the welfare of those children is well uh, taken care of. Honorable Speaker, we are also living in interesting times, um, particularly for those of us, Honorable Speaker, who um, have led an urban life probably for quite a longer period of time, and for one reason or another, um, we have either decided to do away with our, with our cultural beliefs and norms, or we have forgotten all about the Honorable Speaker. To the extent that Honorable Speaker, you'll witness in families where there are disputes of succession, um, a situation where um, you have a dispute as a family, uh, and let, let me say, if it is myself, Honorable Speaker, 
and I have sisters who are married. Uh, an honorable speaker, during the discussion, you know, of the succession, uh, the son-in-laws are part of those discussions, honorable speaker, making it, uh, you know, extremely difficult to resolve um, some of the family disputes that will arise out of um, succession matters. It complicates the matters further. So I would think, want to encourage Senator Veronica Minor to also look into who would be engaged so that it is not an open field and, and everybody comes, you know, you are just a neighbor uh, and, and you want to be part of the process of that succession uh, and so forth. So I think we also need to look into deeply. And um, as we do this, Senator Veronica Mayne has just said earlier, the public participation of these amendments should be given considerable amount of time so that we can have even opportunity, you know, to engage um, and reach out to various communities because other than the law that we develop, we have the norms and cultures and customs of communities in this country, some that are very rich, uh, honorable speaker, and have actually helped to resolve most of the issues, particularly when we talk about alternative dispute resolution, honorable speaker, most of the time it involves a sitting of community elders to consider those matters as per their culture and cultural norms. And honorable speaker, we have witnessed very fair decisions when, um, you know, our cultures and our norms are applied. I would encourage Senator Veronica Minor, because this country, um, we are not too many communities. We are less than 50 communities, and, and we have a whole organ of the Inter-Community Council of Elders, which I would encourage uh, Senator Veronica Minor to even try and engage them so that, you know, we can, we can balance the views of the various communities in the amendments that we are putting in place, um, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I'd also want to say that the issues of the will, Honorable Speaker, we have seen and witnessed um, so many disputes or people disputing the will that was written by, by deceased persons and uh, resulting into so many um, long legal battles, um, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I would want to uh, ask uh, Senator Veronica Minor to also think and um, I would want to do some further research and, and appear before um, the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, Honorable Speaker, on this matter of wills. Uh, I would suggest, Honorable Speaker, going forward into the future uh, so that resources are not locked for a long period of time because of disputes or disputing the will. If we have the registrar of debts and births, why don't we have a registrar of wills so that everybody can have a will and you are asked to review after every five years, and it is kept at the registrar of uh, wills who, upon confirmation of your death and uh, registration of your death, uh, your, your will certificate would be released and it becomes final, honorable speaker. The courts can use that to make those decisions and reduce the time it takes to decide on succession matters, uh, honorable speaker, that leave families so vulnerable for, for, for longer periods of time. Honorable speaker, Particularly in polygamous families, um, and of course the polygamous families we have today, um, we have a bit of um, challenge because some are not properly formalized either culturally or, or in, a, in, a, in, in a legal manner, but we have seen situations where um, some of the spouses in those polygamous families, the Honorable Speaker, are, are, are chased away, their children are denied their rights to go to school, and I think we need to resolve that. We need to really look into those um, amendments that will make sure that none of the desirable beneficiaries would miss the opportunity to benefit. Honorable Speaker, the issue, coming back to the issue of the wills, um, Honorable Speaker, and um, distribution, it would serve this country and I'd want to encourage um, the Kenyan population to take the issue of the will um, seriously and positively, Honorable Speaker, uh, so that in any eventuality, there is minimum room, you know, for, 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 for disputes to arise. And uh, I'll be following up this, uh, Honorable Speaker, under the law of succession and inheritance to make sure that uh, children have no right to begin asking for inheritance from me as a parent, honorable speaker, when I'm still alive. 
And I think we should even make it very clear, Honorable Speaker, that as soon as a child turns 18, they know they are independent, they are Kenyans, they are supposed to stand on their own, uh, and they are supposed to also work for their wealth, Honorable Speaker. Unless wealth that was inherited from your grandfather and so forth. But Honorable Speaker, what I've worked for, it should be at my pleasure and, uh, to decide how I want to, you know, to gift what I have, so that we don't do laws that will encourage children, you know, sending us early to the grave, because now <laughs> there's, there's opportunity to distribute as soon as you leave, because the law says you are going to get this automatically, you are going, regardless of probably what, what has happened. I think we have to make sure that the law uh, takes care of that, um, so that also we have a society that does not then use the law, uh, Honorable Speaker, in, in, in a negative manner. Honorable Speaker, and uh, just as I said, um, uh, and I just want to emphasize to Senator Veronica Minor, in a situation where one remarries, the issues of the assets um, that was acquired in the previous marriage, Honorable Speaker, should be looked into so that the children or the spouse or the parents who probably are dependents of the deceased and, and, and are, not, um, are not disadvantaged. Honorable Speaker, I want to end there but encourage Sen Senator Veronica Minor um, to really give it a thought in terms of giving it sufficient time for public participation for these amendments because they are very critical and answers to the challenges that we are currently going through as a nation. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Senator. Senator Danson Mungatana. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to first of all start by thanking uh, the Honorable Senator Veronica Minor for bringing this amendment on the Law of Succession Act. Uh, Mr. Speaker, many of us who are practitioners of the law, we have grappled uh, with these difficulties. And I know uh, Honorable Veronica is also a practitioner of the law, and I'm very happy to see that she has used her experience of many years to try and resolve the issues that we face all the time in the succession courts. Uh, Mr. Speaker, one of the things that um, uh, people face is when parents, especially when the unfortunate things like the death of both parents in a road accident, in a plane crash, or cars, and they have children who are expecting the parents to come back home in the evening or from their uh, travel, and all of a sudden, they don't have parents. They woke up in the morning, Mr. Speaker, and in the evening, they were orphans, while in the morning they had both parents. And Mr. Speaker, these are real issues that I have personally dealt with in my law firm. Now, how do you protect those children? The children, in the morning, they were protected under the, 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 uh, the, 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 the protection of both their parents. In the evening, there's a plane crash, and they're waiting for their parents to come, and there is nobody uh, going home. So, the intermeddling that we are talking about here, which has been introduced, children find themselves completely exposed, completely unprotected. And unfortunately, some of the relatives who may not have a lot of goodwill on these children, they come and remove them from their property, and many times they tell them, you come and live with auntie, you come and live with uncle, but in fact, the intention is to work their way through to get the property that was entitled to those children. I know of a case, Mr. Speaker, a very successful couple that uh, lost their lives, both of them uh, together. And, uh, you know, we have had to 
um, really look after those children until now, okay, now they are big children and they have come into their own, uh, their parents' property. But Mr. Speaker, assuming that those children were, um, their parents had not planned for eventualities like those, Assuming that uh, it is just like most ordinary Kenyans, that uh, they live believing that they will reach 80, they will reach uh, um, uh, 75, and something like that happens, the children become extremely exposed. Mr. Speaker, therefore, I'm standing not only to support this bill, but to use the floor of this house, Mr. Speaker, to speak to those Kenyans who are listening to me, the time has come, and in these modern times, we must do two things. We must learn to file our KRA returns every year. And at the same time, we must learn to list what we have for that year and to update the will that we have. You and your wife must keep thinking about these kind of eventualities. It is very much an African, Mr. Speaker, to think that you are going to die, to talk about death. In some of our communities, it is actually a taboo to discuss your own death, to plan your own death. That is why it always makes news when someone says, when I die, this is the grave that uh, I'm digging for myself, this is the casket that you are going to use, and this is the way I want to, to, to be to be, to be buried. Ordinarily, this, this is not very African, but I'm, I'm standing on this floor of this house to tell Kenyans that time has come. As you file your returns, also look at what you have and sit down, have a business meeting with your wife or your partner or your partners, whatever the case, and think about if something should happen and you are not there, if something should happen and your wife is not there, what is the case, best case scenario? And Mr. Speaker, an example has been given here of the Honorable Justice uh, Majanja, who said in his will that he was going to be cremated and within uh, a very short time, within hours. I remember one of the other very famous uh, bishops Archbishop, I believe, Manasseh Kuria, also when he said, I want to be cremated, uh, I don't want to be buried, I want to be cremated, uh, it was a shock to us. But these prominent Kenyans are communicating one thing. Let us plan as we live and also plan when we die. Let us uh, do like they did. And the most recent example is Honorable uh, Justice Ma Majanja, who, who uh, I proudly say is a product of uh, the Great Alliance High School, like myself. Mr. Speaker, plan, plan, so that in case this eventuality happens, what are we supposed to do? Who are the lawyers that we should go to? What are they supposed to do? And Mr. Speaker, if we go that way, you will see that even these amendments that Honorable uh, Senator uh, Veronica is talking about here become things that we can deal with. Because if you have properly planned how your home, your matrimonial home should be treated upon your exiting from the earth, Mr. Speaker, we would not have the problems we have here. We would not even need to have this uh, uh, um, uh, amendment as far as intermeddling is concerned. But I, I want to thank Honorable uh, Veronica because she has thought about these amendments. She has brought them before this house. And I, I really, really, really wanted to emphasize the fact that let us plan as we plan for, for being alive. Let us also plan for uh, when we have departed from, from this earth. This bill, Mr. Speaker, if you look at the memorandum and objects uh, or, or, of the bill, is also discussing about court decisions that have been made by the High Court 
the Constitutional Court has declared sections of the Law of Succession Act as being discriminatory on the basis of gender. So that, Mr. Speaker, the life interest upon remarriage was not lost for uh, widowers, but for widows, it was lost. And um, I know arguments have been made here uh, for and against the African customary law as far as interpretation of this uh, 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 in amendment is concerned. But Mr. Speaker, when we look at this thing uh, carefully, uh, when you're alive and your spouse is alive and you say you've worked very hard and you have brought uh, a property that you have given for rental purposes, Mr. Speaker, it is very unfair that if the husband should pass away um, and the wife stays three, four, five years and remarries, her life interest in that property uh, gets lost. But if the husband, uh, if the wife passes on, the life interest of the husband remains. Mr. Speaker, this is uh, discriminatory and I thank the Honorable Senator because it has come at a time when it is curing this discrimination. Mr. Speaker, we are going towards an era where we need to recognize that our partners, in fact, uh, are part and parcel of ourselves and uh, the, the, the law now must move in that direction. The law must recognize uh, the, the position of, of, of our women. Mr. Speaker, just two weeks ago, we were in the Pan-African Parliament, and one of the things that was being debated at the Continental Parliament was a question of gender discrimination in leadership, gender discrimination, in property ownership, gender discrimination, even in uh, appointments, gender discrimination, even in the financial sector. And Mr. Speaker, this bill is one of those that is trying to, to bring that equity that we have been talking about for a long time. And I know it will take time before we actualize the, the realities of the, 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 the equity that is required. But the more we talk about these things, the more we debate them, the more they become acceptable that the, the, the other gender, the women and ourselves, we have equal responsibilities and there is no basis for discrimination irrespective of our customs. Some of our customs are very good. Some of our customs need to go with the times because, so I, and I know other people have argued that uh, customs should take precedent in some of these matters, but I believe that um, customs should also be able to move with the times and um, it will be good for us to pass this law, support this law, so that those offensive sections 35 and 36 of the Act, the Succession, of, uh, the Succession Act, can be removed as the court had ordered in its judgment. Mr. Speaker, I want to emphasize another thing, that uh, if we can sit down and discuss these matters while we are alive, uh, we can agree, even the properties, Mr. Speaker, just like bank accounts, if you have joint bank accounts, even if you pass away, Mr. Speaker, there's no, uh, the, the, the rigmarole of going through law of succession just to access the funds to keep the children or the family moving are not there. So it is time for us to consider having joint accounts. And I know Many of us would argue that, oh, you know, you know, you know, there could be a divorce, there could be so many other things, maybe the issue of trusts exist. Then you don't have to do all the accounts to be joint. You could have some uh, joint, some independent. But um, joint accounts help to resolve some of the issues that go around succession. Joint accounts between our, our spouses, they help to resolve some of the issues around succession because they make that property easily accessible, that property, and I mean the cash, the property in the cash, easily accessible in the bank. Mr. Speaker, also joint registration 
of properties. They also help to deal with um, uh, the, the, the rigmarole of succession. So that in the event that uh, either spouse passes away, the other one who is holding the joint registration continues with the, the property in full uh, ownership of that property. And Mr. Speaker, this also helps. And in terms of planning, Mr. Speaker, even, even, uh, even uh, 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 when one of the spouses passes, especially if it is the man and he was the breadwinner, and you left your wife and she has access to the bank's accounts because they were joint bank accounts, at least some of them, and she has access to the property, including the matrimonial property, because you had registered it jointly. Then, Mr. Speaker, even you, as you are going to the, to, to the other world, you live with peace. You live knowing that your family is taken care of. The days of uh, trying to register your brother, your cousin, your whatever, uh, as, as the, the, the person who should... Uh, should, should take over in case anything happens, those days have been passed with time. So, Mr. Speaker, I think uh, some of these innovations uh, are very good for purposes of making sure that uh, we don't have the problems that are associated with uh, death which are interested. That is, you've died without a will. Mr. Speaker, also, you know you have seven children and you have uh, plots, you have land, you have bank accounts, you have properties all over this country and maybe outside. What is the problem with you and your wife assigning these properties to the children when you are alive so that when you are existing, when you are, start, you are exiting, you are able to clearly, everyone is able to clearly see this is what mom and dad wanted for me for uh, number two, for number three, and so on, instead of leaving things hanging. Uh, so I'm urging people to write their wills. And if they don't write their wills, then while you are alive, if you don't feel like that is probably your custom, doesn't allow you to plan for that, then while you are alive, uh, make viva voce uh, decision. You know, make, make those agreements. Uh, be in joint accounts with your wife, with your spouse. Uh, transfer the properties to the children while you are alive if you don't want to plan for a will. So there are two options. Let us not engage uh, so much. And Kenyans listening to me, let us not waste a lot of our money in these succession battles. Mr. Speaker, uh, some of even our colleagues, very notable colleagues, we have read and we have seen people who have enriched themselves, lawyers who have become very rich from the estates of some of our colleagues. And the children are suffering. The grandchildren are suffering. Some of the grandchildren are even uh, dying poor. They can't pay medical bills. And yet the father, when we were here, they worked very hard. They did so many things. They were very prominent Kenyans, and they took time to arrange, uh, to accumulate wealth. But then, when they are gone, because they died without organizing themselves, these lawyers have gone on to accumulate wealth from the wealth that they left. So, Mr. Speaker, I am uh, repeating that we need to plan for our families, plan for, for death, and a plan for the succession properly. But this bill is going to help those who will refuse to plan, is going to help interpret some of these sections, and it's going to bring equity between spouses who have lived together or who have been married for, for many years. And Mr. Speaker, I think this is a beautiful bill. And um, uh, with those very many remarks, I, 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 I wish to support. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator. There being no other senators wishing to contribute, I ask the mover to reply. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And let me, at the very onset, uh, thank all the senators for their insightful, the Honorable Senators for their insightful contributions towards this very important uh, amendment. 
Uh, let me begin by thanking Senator Segei for his remarks and giving the update on how far the JLAC committee is in preparing the report uh, that had considered uh, some of the uh, stakeholders' views that had been sent to JLAC on the stakeholders' engagement. And let me also thank the majority leader for his very uh, wise remarks uh, regarding uh, the import of Section 40 and 41 of the Succession Act. And let me say at the very onset that uh, in the law of succession, it's, a, it's an act of parliament that deals with the distribution of the estate of the deceased persons. It specifically angles on uh, succession matters. It, 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 it deals with uh, assets and liabilities of a deceased person at the time when that person is departed. And it has two uh, big, broad branches in, in the manner in which it deals with these matters. There is the test it part. That's when a, a person is deceased uh, and has made a will. And it also has the intested part which is the larger, it contains more provisions of the intestate because uh, when a person becomes deceased and they have not written down the will, then there are different rules that are engaged. And that is why what has been amended right now is uh, in relation to mostly part of the sections that deal with the uncertainties when somebody has not left, has died and has not left a will. And that's why when you see the amendments we are discussing today, it's not because the concentration is more so on the property. It's because the branch of law of succession itself deals with succession matters when somebody has already passed on. And that's the reality of life. Uh, we live someday and we depart someday from this life. And when we depart, how the state of the person who departs is organized is managed under the law of succession. That's why it's called the law of succession. So thank you, Majority Leader, for raising an important question on how we present uh, bills to this house, especially when we are amending sections of law, that when we do the cross-reference, it's important that we have the sections that are being cross-referenced. I guess that is for the Secretariat to improve on how we present the bill so that it's easier for honorable senators to be able to, de to, to, to debate. But uh, if I may look at uh, one of the questions that uh, the majority leader, Senator Aaron Cheriot, raised, it's in in relation to uh, section 40, and this is a section that deals with uh, uh, with the system of law that recognizes uh, polygamy and and the estate of a deceased person in the event that uh, they die when they are in a polygamous situation and without a will, and it provides for distribution of that estate according to the houses or what you call units. For example, if a deceased had two wives and wife number A has three children, wife number B has four children, and the wife number A with three children plus herself, those will be four units. Wife number two, who has, let's say, four children plus herself, those will be five units. So each person is treated as a unit in law. So if you have an additional one child, then that child will be treated as one unit, and they are not going to be said that a, a child who comes out of the, the first home takes half by herself or himself just because they come from another home. No. If the child is one, they'll be treated as one unit. If the other family has three children, they'll be treated as three plus one, the one being the wife. So they'll be treated as four on the first house and one on the second house. That will be five. So each person gets an equal treatment in law. Uh, and how do we deal with the distribution of that estate? If, for instance, you say the estate was worth two million shillings and there were ten units, then it will be divided among the ten units. Let me also thank uh, Senator Omugeni. Uh, who has uh, extensively dealt with the issue of this amendment. There was an attempt in the previous Senate to do some amendments to the uh, family law in succession, but it did not succeed. And we hope that this will eventually see the light of day. He raises an important question on uh, 
people considering to write down their will so that they attest it. Now, when a person writes down their will, the person who is doing the will, uh, that's the testator, becomes, become, uh, puts down what he would, how he would intend the estate to be distributed among his dependents or among the beneficiaries of that estate. It makes it easier for everybody. So, what happens if such a person dies and they've already written a will, if that will is legal and is not challengeable in court, then it makes it easy for distribution of the estate because the court would basically adopt the will and then it will proceed to allow distribution of the estate with the will uh, describing how or prescribing how that distribution should be undertaken. It makes work easier, and I'm happy that uh, the example of our Honorable Judge Justice uh, Majanja has been used to show how when a man has planned his uh, issues, then uh, everything becomes a lighter burden to those who are left surviving. Senator Enoch Wambua, also thank you for the contribution and thank you for the concern you have raised that a, a marriage should not just be about properties. Marriage actually is a God-given institution and the concentration should not be on property. However, properties cannot be ignored because uh, for that marriage and that family to be able to provide for the children, there are those things that must be done for life and subsistence, and, and that's where this question of succession comes in. Uh, but definitely, this law uh, does not, by any chance, make it easier for people to determine that they'll get married because they want to inherit property. Indeed, property should be the last thing that people should be considering. Uh, I think marriage and uh, choice of spouses should be based on love and should be based more on God's command, not on uh, the urge to acquire property. If someone just wants to acquire property, then they would rather look for business ventures, but not tuck and hide behind marriage. So I quite agree with you, but I would also want at the very onset to clarify that uh, the law of succession, what we are introducing here is an amendment. It has been in existence. So even before this amendment, the law does exist, and it's the one that guides the courts in how the state is uh, is, uh, is being distributed, so maybe I do not see these amendments encouraging people to treacherously look for spouses, either men or women, to marry just because they want to acquire property. But in the event that there is a demise which, is, uh, uh, which would be an unfortunate incident, then there is a guideline in law to allow, to show how that property should be uh, distributed. Senator Agnes Kavindu raised an important question of how in law sometimes can become wild and chase out uh, the family and uh, that also the protection that is being offered by the amendments would uh, maybe deal with these issues. So we hope that we can clarify and re-clarify the law until we are in a happy state where the implementation is easier. And she also raised the need to amend the Matrimonial Properties Act. That's an important debate because we know there is jurisprudence that has come even from the Supreme Court regarding how the court determines what is the contribution of each spouse towards a matrimonial property and what is defined as a matrimonial property or matrimonial properties. That's a challenge that we will be taking. Uh, Senator... Madago raised an important issue on cultural practices that we need to consider, whether there are principles within cultural practices that we need to uh, reduce into principles that can help us improve our jurisprudence or even improve our legislation. And uh, definitely that will be taken up. And Senator Danson has also brought out the question of uh, Gender equality, which is the trend that the world is taking, including at a continental level and at a, and at a global level, that uh, we make it a level for uh, both genders to be treated equally and to be able to enjoy. Each gender should enjoy what another gender is enjoying and also brings out the need for people to plan and, and, and plan and plan and plan and be able to reduce, uh, to reduce their wishes into a will. 
how to prepare a will, where is that will deposited. In fact, one of the senators asked whether we should have a registry for wills. For the time being, a will, once it's written down, of course can be deposited with your lawyers or can be deposited in the bank or in a safe place where you know that a person holding the will is such a person of integrity that even when the family says, uh, uh, ni mama fulani, ama ni baba fulani, who, has, uh, who is keeping custody of that will, it is credible and believable and will not be treated as a fraud. I have taken uh, into consideration all these proposals and the need to further refine the amendments and I'll be presenting them to JLAC so that uh, at, the committee, at the committee of whole stage we can effect the amendments and so that when the, com uh, the JLAC committee brings the report then they'll be considered wholesome and we can reclarify the critical issues, even the issue of uh, uh, children who are born not by the, the spouse. Like, for instance, if a woman gets married with two children and those children don't belong to that man, are they entitled to inherit? Of course, there is what the jurisprudence has been driving us uh, to see and what the jurisprudence has been set by court is to say that uh, some of the children, unless they were recognized and adopted by the man who has married their mother, then maybe they will have to go back and inherit with their father. But those are clarifications that we will need to put as we look at the further amendments as proposed by senators. That is one of the things we are going to do so that uh, when the report comes back to the House at the point where we have committee of whole, these amendments can proceed to be effected. Uh, and then, of 